Good to know you're still with us. Now, the Ondo State Deputy Governor, Agbola Ajayi, has resigned his membership of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, and has said that he is still the Deputy Governor of the state, adding that he would not resign his position. A mild drama had played out on Saturday night after the Ondo State Governor, Rotimi Akeredolu, instructed, allegedly, security agents to block his deputy from packing out of the government house in Akura, the state capital, ahead of the planned defection um, of Ajayi to the PDP in preparation um, for the October 10, 2020 governorship election in this state. Joining us now to uh, discuss this is legal practitioner uh, Taiwo Akinlami. Thank you very much for joining us. Or should I say staying with us? Thank you for having me. Uh, we also will be joined by the CPS to the Ondo State Deputy Governor uh, in a bit. But let's start with Mr. Akinlami. What does the law say about a uh, sitting, a situation like this rather, a sitting governor, a deputy governor, reigning from, um, resigning rather, from the party he gained his position while still trying to retain his seat. Okay. Um, I'll look at it from the letters of the Constitution. Section 186 uh, makes copious provisions for the office of the deputy governor of the state. While Section 142 of the Constitution makes provision for the office of the vice president. But this is the point. In the case of 42, the constitution is clear as to the fact that the vice president is to be chosen from the same political party with the president. But in the case of section 168 and 167, the constitution is silent as to whether the, the deputy governor should be from the same political party uh, with the governor. Now, that is a lacuna within the concern of Nigeria, which is something that needs to be amended. Now, scholars have looked at this session, legal scholars have looked at this session, and have said that it has created a constitutional crisis. And that is what we, are, we have in our hands now. But you see, this is subject to, to judicial test, the judicial process. I think it stands to reason that if you come into office under a political party, that political party has a manifesto. That manifesto is in, is, is, uh, in conjunction with Chapter 2 of the Constitution, which says the welfare and the security of the people shall be the primary of government. So if you depart from that party, it may stand to reason to say that since you stop being a member of the political party by under which you were elected to office, you cease to be uh, a deputy governor under that party. But it's not straightforward like that. It's a matter because the governor has a mandate. The deputy governor has a mandate. It's a joint mandate. You remember in the case of Atiku and uh, Obasanjo, where Obasanjo wanted to remove Atiku by fear. You know, the court held that it is not possible because Obasanjo cannot, President Obasanjo then, cannot remove Atiku from office, considering the fact that they were jointly elected into office. So this is a new matter, a new terrain, a new fact, and we need to, be, we need to see how it plays out. Is there a connection between this? This is a deputy, but this is a governor. I'm talking about the Ado State uh, situation where the sitting governor um, is moving, has moved, not is moving to another party in order to VI for another position. And we have, the, is there a similarity between the two of them? Well, there's a level of similarity between two of them. In this, in, in the Ado State, the deputy governor has moved. Remember, they were voted under a particular political party. And in a third state, it is the governor and the deputy governor that has moved. I think, legally speaking, it's something that needed to be subjected to the legal process. But morally speaking, I don't think you can you can become a a governor or a deputy governor under a particular political party, leave that political party, and still 
what remains a problem. Because you see, it is important to understand that there is no independent candidacy in Nigeria. You run under a political party. Your identity as a candidate is subsumed under a political party. So there's no independent candidacy. So if you depart from that party, it stands to reason morally, not legally now, because, because literally looking at it, is still something that needs to be subjected to legal process until there's a precedent or the constitution is clearly amended to say that if you if you if you are elected by a particular political party and you decamp from that political party or you cross carpet as it is said in political balance, then you lose your mandate. So All these right, are uh, fundamental issues that we need to test under the law. But morally speaking, it stands to reason that uh, if you are elected by a political party and you choose to leave the political party, you should not continue to hold office under that political uh, 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 you should not continue to hold office to which were elected under that particular political party. All right, uh, Mr. Kilami, uh, let's go on a quick break. Just stay on the line. We'll be right back after it. Good to know you're still with us. You're still watching Plus Politics and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we have two gentlemen um, joining us virtually for this conversation. Uh, Taiwa Kinlami is a legal practitioner, and Babatokwe Okeowo is the Chief Press Secretary uh, to the Ondo State uh, Deputy Governor. He also joins us. Uh, welcome, Mr. Okeowo. Good evening. Uh, good evening. We've spoken with Mr. Akin Lamy, and he has given us some uh, basic understanding of where the law uh, is. My question to you is, um, the deputy governor seems to um, hold the position that everybody knows why he left the party. But for the purpose of clarification, for those who might be unaware, could you tell us the reason uh, the deputy governor left the APC? One of the reasons, as uh, stated in his letter, is that he wants to join other people to build a formidable platform. For the, uh, as a he wants to build, join others as in order to build a PDP and to make it a formidable uh, party to win next governorship election in on those states. Another thing is that there is a big disconnect between the government and the, and the people of those states. And as a system politician, he doesn't want to be in that same boat that has disappointed people of the state. So he has to leave before he gets rubbish. No, but, but let me let me ask. It's curious when you when you think about it. If he is leaving because he is unhappy with certain things that is going on, there is a disconnect between the government and the people, and he still wants to retain his position as the deputy governor. How will he work? How would that partnership with a leadership he seems to disagree with and trying to serve the people? How will that work? It has worked. It has worked in Chokoto State. It has worked in Ogun State. The lawyer there that spoke the other time said he has incited the authority in Atiku by Sebastian John. So, and both of them served their tenor. So, since, it has, since we have precedence, this one is not going to be a new thing. And how many months do we have left in this government? There will be an election in October. And there will be change of guard by February 23rd next year. So that's the situation on ground. Can you honestly so have, say, have, can you honestly say, um, uh, sir, can you honestly say that the move um, was more for the people than a political strategy? Well, I'm not a politician, I'm a reporter. So I wouldn't know 
uh, the difference between political strategy and political move. <laughs> All right. But let's just say that we are in a political time, and whatever you do, people will need political meanings to it. All right, let, let, let's go back to uh, Mr. Akin Lamy for a bit. I, I want to I get your unique perspective on the uh, situation that played out at the government house. What's your position between what played out between the CP, uh, Salami, in the state, and uh, the deputy governor when he tried to leave the government house? Was there a breach of his fundamental human rights, as is being alleged? Well, by the fact that are available to public domain, which, uh, which is the fact that the, the deputy governor, uh, his movement was, con was curtailed. Uh, there are counterfeits also that the movement of the deputy governor was not curtailed, that the deputy governor was the one who invited the commissioner of police. And these are, these are facts and counterfeits. But if it is found that the, that the movement of the deputy governor was curtailed, I mean, that is a breach of his fundamental human rights. You know, uh, freedom of movement. Uh, he has a right in thought against the forced imprisonment. These are issues. But well, you see, all, this, all of these issues that we are discussing, I think at the end of the day, as a student, as, as, a, as a social development lawyer, I try to look at law from the perspective of the people, from the jurisprudence of sociology which is the fact that the law in itself must be an instrument of social change. So when we discuss all of this, a governor has been elected, elected with a deputy governor. Deputy governor has left, has defected to another party. Now we are addressing the issue, should the deputy governor remain in office? Should he not remain in office? Should he be sacked? And all of that. Now the law is very, the law is a bit tricky about all of these issues, which is the fact that how do you even remove a governor? How do you remove a deputy governor? A, a governor does not have the legal uh, authority to remove a deputy governor. What are, the same process by which a governor is to be removed under the law is the same process by which a deputy governor can be removed, which is the responsibility of the status of assembly. But I will say all of that the question I'm concerned about is how does he, at the end of the day, pay the people of Ondo State? How do Ondo State people eat the fruits of democracy, of good governance? At the end of the day, the disagreement between the governor and his deputy should not be our concern. Our concern should be, at the end of the day, Whosoever is in government is able to meet the need of the people, the hopes, yearnings, and aspirations of the people. Because chapter two of the concern is clear. The welfare and the security of the people shall be the primary of government. So today you are in PDP. Tomorrow you are in APC. Look at the absurdity happening in the state. In the last election, Eze Yamu was the PDP gubernatorial candidate. Then the president, the, the, the removed or controversial chairman of APC, called him all kinds of names. Now, but, but, but Mr. Kilami, uh, just, just for the purpose of just identifying something, you said uh, politics, and at the end of the day, it's politics, but somebody, you also identified the fact that um, we don't have independent candidates, and in order for you to serve, you have to move, you have to belong to a party. So if a party is not serving you, I mean, aren't you supposed to move? If you truly want to serve the people, let me just um, uh, put that out as a sort of rhetorical question. For every action, there's a reaction. For every action, there are consequences. I'm not saying the deputy governor should not have moved. I'm just saying that the governor does not have the authority. The same way, he said, I've told you that it's not, it's not clear cut. We can't just say because the deputy governor has moved, he should leave office. Because the constitution has created a constitutional crisis, oh, yeah, right you know, which is not clear when it comes to section 142, which sits with the office of the vice president. So, but in section 186 hmm? and section 187, the constitution is silent as to the status, as to whether 
a deputy governor should come from the same political party. And that's why I said it's something that should be subjected to judicial process. All right, let's bring uh, Mr. Okeowa back into the conversation. Um, I, I don't know if you want to have a quick reaction to what Mr. Kilami is saying, uh, that the deputy governor should ideally um, resign. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I didn't say the deputy governor should resign, please. Oh, okay, what, you, you, said, you said something that ideally he should step aside. Uh, what I'm saying is that according to the letters of the law today, legally speaking, if, if the constitution does not say a political a deputy governor should come from the same party with the governor. So that gives him the legal standing. But morally speaking, if you come into office through a political party and you are not jettisoning the political party, all right, okay. I, I still get it's basically um around the same thing. Mr. Okel, what can you hear me? I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, so what is your reaction to his submission that even though, um, I mean, he can stay on, but he could consider uh, resigning since he has left the, party, left the party on which he came on? No, he himself says that it is not, it can, that that thing should be tested legally. It's a welcome development. But we have already, we already have a president that came from the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, that says that you don't need to be in the same political party with your, uh, the person you are both uh, elected. Let me say this. In Nigeria, there is no clear ideology. He said, Eze Yamu was a PDP's candidate in 2016. Now he is APC's candidate in 2020. The same uh, uh, government of Aseki that defeated him when he was in APC has now moved to PDP. So in Nigeria, there's no clear political ideology. All right. Are you getting it? Uh, yeah. Now? Okay. So let's 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 if, quickly. If, if, if they are assuming, excuse me, if there has to be political ideology, then we'll see people moving today, tripping as uh, PDP today, waking up as APC tomorrow. All right. Let's let's see if we can squeeze in other aspects to this conversation, and that's the fact that he has moved into a new party, the PDP. There are, as at last count, we have eight people um, that has um, put but the form to become, you know, uh, uh, candidates of the PDP. And some of them are uh, expressing dissatisfaction with what they are describing as or due advantage being given to uh, Mr. Ajayi. Um, what is your thinking? Um, is this going to cause ruffle uh, within the PDP, or do you think that before the date um, of the primaries that all of these would have been sorted out? This man you said is being given advantage, has not obtained any form to contest. As we speak, he has not obtained form. So where is the advantage from? Let me say that people who are crying know the accident, accident of the deputy governor of Ondo State. Number one, he was he started his political career from the grassroots, and now before uh, he became deputy governor, he has held position as caretaker chairman, elected chairman, uh, House of Rep member, and now deputy governor. So he, he has the pedigree. So other people are will naturally be busy that right. this big speech coming to our party will will rush uh, the ambition. Mr. Okiowo. I, I'm afraid that's the more time we'll let us uh, uh, take uh, from you. Thank you very much for your input. You are welcome. Um, uh, Mr. Kinlami, your final thoughts on this, if you can do that in 30 seconds, it will be really appreciated. Okay, well, my final comment is that the Nigerian people must wake up. 
There is no difference between PDP and APC. They are the same. They are the same. The common denominator it is, is the interest of the people. And that's why I strongly believe in what Daniel Fauci always say, do not die in their war. The war is between the political class and they know what is causing the trouble for them there. The Nigerian people must be interested in how government can be made to serve the cause of the people. That should be where the debate must be. Thank you All very right. much. Thank you so much for joining us on Plus Politics tonight. Thank you so much. Bye. And thank you for staying with us thus far. We're not done yet, though. We'll take a short break for our Plus report. And when we return, I will give my take. The Edo State Deputy Governor, Philip Shuaibu, has he come to the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Mr. Shuaibu, while leading thousands of supporters to the PDP State Secretariat in Benin City, where he obtained the party's membership card, said he has lost confidence in the ability of the All Progressives Congress, APC, to deliver on its mandate to the people. He said the APC has lost its democratic ideals, thus his movement to the PDP, following suit with Governor Godwin Obaseki, who recently also decamped. That I am joining PDP today. Uh, first, you, you struggle to form a party, and after forming the party, those that benefited from the party that you formed took over the party and become tyrants. It's not always easy to abandon that vehicle that you helped to, 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 to form and nurture because one individual become, became an Adolf Hitler in the system, it become undemocratic. And for some of us, we believe in the people. We believe that the people must lead at all times. And because of that, we cannot afford to abandon this state for people like that. And that is why we decided that the best thing is to abandon them in that party and join the People's Democratic Party for the purpose of continuing the developmental stride of the government. For us, we have made up our mind right from time that where the governor goes, that is where we are going. And I'm excited that the governor decided that we have to use the People's Demo join the People's Democratic Party to actualize the vision of Edo people. And for us, there are two parties that are being in this state. Every other party is just, is just there in the background, the APC and the People's Democratic Party. Today, obviously, APC has become an opposition party in the state, while PDP has become the ruling party in the state. And by the grace of God, for us, it's not about us, it's about the people. So I'm excited and happy uh, because some of the faces that I've seen here today are faces that uh, we have been having it hard to crack. So joining them today and our forces coming together, obviously nobody, nobody can defeat us. Will a man who is fighting corruption be careless to put his hand in the same cookie jar? A man who from day one seems to be fighting to stay on a job which looks prestigious, quite powerful, and is also very tasking and dangerous, considering the many enemies he makes staring the affairs of that um, commission. On the flip side, why would an administration that prides itself as an anti-corruption champion wait for eternity to act on a report indicting the acting chairman of the EFCC as unfit to hold the office. Witch hunt or not, even with the repeated rejection of the nomination by the 8th Assembly on the basis of that same intelligence report, five years on, he is still in an acting capacity. Is it the position of the law that if you are screened to be unfit to hold public office, you should hold that office in an acting capacity indefinitely? I doubt that. Why do we continue to have a head of such a crucial anti-corruption agency being run by one who it seems is perpetually looking behind his shoulders? Someone whose integrity is perpetually being questioned. Might it be that he is hitting too hard, as some had said, and those with webs in their closets are afraid and would do anything to keep him in this continued state of limbo?
is there no one else worthy and schooled enough in the act of anti-corruption in the entire country to head this agency? It worries me truly, as I believe it does uh, many other Nigerians watching on the sidelines, that such a key pillar of the APC and President Muhammad Buhari's anti-corruption um, administration on anti-corruption fights, that's the EFCC, and one of his cardinal promises continues to wobble over undefined leadership. The president, as Justice Ijoma Ojuku said, holds the yam and the knife on this matter. My take tonight, he must use it and chat a defined leadership part for the EFCC once and for all. Thank you for watching the program tonight. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. Until then, please be well.